Man, it's starting to get chilly in here. It's down here. I got all kinds of goodies in here. We just a double pull, double throw relay. This is 110, so this ain't gonna do us much good in our in my review. Find another one to go over with the guys. Oh, there you are. Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Well, today I'm gonna to try this in a little different format. The last video I made was a review of chapter one. And for those of you who participated and gave me some feedback and answered the questions, thank you. It really helps. It lets me know which direction to guide you guys. It lets me know if you're, you're catching what I'm trying to show you. Therefore, I could uh, proceed on to, without getting you guys confused. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just trying my best and keep it interactive. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. I know I am. So with that being said, the number one thing I noticed that you guys stumbled on was uh, that little box up next to the fuse. What I intended that to be was a voltage indicator box. So in that circuit, at that state, that box on that schematic would have read hot at all times because it's directly hooked up to the battery from point A to point B. There's nothing in between it. No switches. It's hot at all times. In another condition, you might find a fuse that might only be hot with the ignition switch on, so that box would say hot with key on. Things of that nature. And uh, we'll look at that more the further we go when we get into the schematics, but you'll see that a lot on automotive schematics. But enough being said, let's, uh, let's take a quick review, and then we'll, we'll get back here. Like I said, I'm going to try this one in a different format, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, let's take a moment and uh, review that schematic from the chapter one review. <clears throat> okay, here's that schematic that I posted on the last video for you guys to review and answer and tell me what the components were or their symbol. Let's start with number one. What is this symbol? That symbol is the ground. Number two. What is this symbol? That was a battery, a DC battery. Um, some of you may have got that confused with the capacitor, and I can see why, because some wiring schematics, like all data, use this as a capacitor symbol. And even in my description on for a capacitor in um, chapter one, I used this same symbol. So sorry for any confusion, but that's some of the things you're going to come across in this uh, in this type of work. Okay, what's number three? The squiggly line. We're going to cover three and four in the next slide. Okay, number three is the fuse. That's what protects the circuit. Number four was the voltage indicator box. That reads hot at all times. Yeah, it was number five. Number five was a single pole, single throw switch. We're going to call this the ignition switch in this circuit. Okay, it was number six. Single pole, single throw relay. And that's pretty much all the components. Minus, minus this ground, which is, which we covered it for number one. So, what happens when we flip this switch in this circuit? I don't know if you've just seen what happened. Let me replay it. I'm going to flip the switch. And as you see, it closed that circuit. It allowed the current to flow down to this coil, which uh, created an electromagnetic field and pulled that other contact closed. And now allows voltage and allows the current to flow down through that that contact. But right now we have an open contact so there's no flow, there's no current. So let's put a load on this circuit. Let's open it back up and uh Put a load on it. Well here, for this illustration, the load I added to the circuit is a horn. 
So now, if I flip the switch, it closes, and we just activated our horn. But one bad thing about that is that every time you turn your ignition switch on, your horn's going to activate. So, what do we have to do in that case? Well, that's when we add a control circuit, which would be your horn button on your steering wheel. That uses the ground side of the circuit. And as you can see, I used a push button, momentary button, switch. So it's normally open switch. When you push it, it closes and completes the ground. So we just turn the ignition switch back on. That allowed current to flow. Can't go this way because that contact's open. So it comes down through the coil. It can't create a magnetic field because there's no path to ground because we just opened that circuit. So in order to make that contact close for this coil to energize and create a magnetic field, we got to press the horn button. Okay, now horn button is closed. The current can flow down through the coil. Through the momentary push button contacts to ground, which created a magnetic field and pulled, pulled in your uh, contact and allowed the current to flow down through the contact to your load to your load which is the horn and activate the horn. If I release the momentary push button it opens that contact even with the ignition switch on it uh, deactivated the horn. And that's the circuit in its normal state. So when I say the normal state when you see a schematic in this in its normal state, that means this is a normally open contact. That means when everything's at rest, you get your key out of the ignition, this contact's open. As long as you're not pushing on the horn in its normal state, the push button contacts are open. So that's a normally open momentary switch. Your relay is open. So that's a normally open single pole, single throw relay. Alright, guys, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that wasn't so bad, was it? Alright, review the rest of that circuit, and I'm going to be throwing this video up next. In this next video, I'm going to be going over some, uh, some different style of meters and different style of test equipment. Uh, let me give you a quick review. This here's a test light. It's a simple circuit, pretty much a light bulb. This one uses an LED. However, it's just a, it's pretty much a light bulb. If you hook this up to the ground, Hit this to the positive, you're going to light the light bulb. So it's a real simple device, but uh, this is what you're going to use 90% of the time for quick reference. I have a couple different style of test lights, I just brought this one out just for demonstration. Uh, DVOM, it's a digital volt ohm meter. It's capable of checking ohms, continuity, DC volts, AC volts, AC amps, and DC amps. The only downside to this is that it's a 10 amp max, it's a fuse circuit, and uh, I'll be going over that when I go over the meter. On to this meter, this in here is a, a clamp style amp meter. This one will do DC and AC amps, along with everything else that this thing will do. That actually does a couple things more, but this thing has uh, its other beneficial points too. But yeah, that's pretty much a DVON and amp clamp meter all in one. Got a temperature probe that you can hook up to either one of those meters. Here you got a, this is what they call a cable tracer. That's to find like if you have a broken wire or something in a circuit or, you know, somewhere within the car and you don't want to pull the wire out of the loom. This here saves a lot of time. You can hook this as a, what it is, it's actually a pulse generator. You hook it up to the wire. And then you, you check for the pulse all the way down. It'll send a series of beeps, and you'll know when you've come across the broken, the broken part. And I'll demonstrate that as well. That's a, that's a pretty good device to have, piece of test equipment. And then over here, we just have some different style jumper kits, you know, for quick clamps and stuff like that that'll plug right into the meter instead of using alligator clips. Radio Shack makes these. You can buy them anywhere. 
that sells test equipment. This is for smaller stuff. For heavier stuff, I have a heavier set as well. But for what I'll be demonstrating in this next chapter, probably be just using that and some jumper cables, wires with alligator clips, you know. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned.